and uh, we have started recording. I still don't know what happens at one. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've never let it go. Make it. Make it is my podcast. Make it. Make it is my. Make it. Make it is my podcast. Make it. Make it is my. Over there, we got. There. Jimmy G. Here. Craving Strange. That's right. And over there. Wait, there. Other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Wayman, something heavy. We're together. We are. Bacon, is, Bacon my is my pod. And this is Bacon is my podcast. Right. I thought we had this down. We have we had do. like a good rhythm. A couple, uh, you know. Once or twice, we had a good rhythm. We had a really good rhythm. I think we've been off for a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, we had a little bit. We had a, we had a couple week break that we took to uh, recharge. Yeah, because it's very vigorous. And, uh, what we do. Yeah, exactly. It's vigorous. It's it's daunting. It's uh it's rough. It's rough, folks. Um, yeah, a lot of heartache in this. It's really, it's not tough. easy. It's, it's absolutely. Believe me, I know. I got. I deal with me every day. I I do. I do like dealing with you. It's actually, dude. It's it's been a long time coming too because we've kind of gotten things together, and then we had to like pull back, and then we got things together again, and then we had to kind of pull back, and then this seems like this is the one. Yeah, this one's this one's lasting. This one. We're not having a hard time doing this, you know. Right. Right, and we've been doing this for what? Uh, we're going on like three months, four months now. Three months, three, four months now, yeah. Three, four months now of a weekly show. That's yeah. uh weekly content. Yeah, that's craziness. It's a <laughs> cure for your Monday, uh, your case of the Mondays. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We make Monday mornings a little bit better. A little bit. A little bit. <sighs> they can make everything better. And I got it mounted somewhere different. So, uh, yeah, I'm seeing a very cool, like, uh, like that, that down angle of you. Yeah, it's not a drone, folks. It's not a drone, which is nice. It's nice. It's a good, it's a good look. It shows like the back of the room. It's not as much of a close up as I'm used to with you. Um, you know, you had it for, for our last, uh, one where we were together. Yeah. So, um, I got to see it from that end, but this is like now I'm seeing what the people see. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It looks good. So um, before we start, what we have to tell you is uh, we are brought to you. We are powered by Poddex. Mm. Proud to be powered by Poddex. Yeah. and A uh, lot of alliteration there, folks. Yeah. So here they are. They're almost like Cards Against Humanity. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you go to poddex.com, Use the promo code BACON, and guess what happens? Jim, tell them. I'll tell you what happens, because I just recently ordered two new packs of pod decks, and I used promo code BACON, and uh, I got myself 10% off. I got myself 10% off. What a great deal that is. And I didn't even know this, because um, this is the first set that I personally ordered. Uh, I got an email. From Poddex, like a nice email, like saying yeah. hello and then saying they shipped it and then said, hey, uh, it came in. It shows that it was delivered. You know, like they seem like a very personable company. I, I, I dig it. And they've gotten back to us right away when we when yeah, we contacted I gotta, them. I got to say, Travis has been awesome. Awesome. Yeah. He's an awesome dude. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's going to help us out with the little project we got going on soon. So. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of companies that uh, seem to actually care 
yeah. about the people that purchase from them. I like that. I think yeah. that's awesome. So, Beautiful. so big, uh, big hearty cheers to you, Poddex. So once again, poddex.com. <laughs> cheers to Poddex. Code. Bacon. Bacon. So yeah, I got a soda here. I'm not usually a soda drinker. Yeah. What kind of uh, what kind of soda do you got? Well, the reason why I have a soda here is because I saw it at the the uh, convenience store, and it's Dr Pepper and cream what soda. What is that? It's Dr Pepper and cream soda. I heard this was coming out. I heard this was coming out. I heard the rumors. I heard the rumbles in the streets yeah, the dr really pepper cream soda was coming out rumbles about sodas but well you know you're not in the streets i don't hang out the same place as you do i'm in the yeah burbs. that's right you're in the burbs i you know i'm in the streets sometimes where they talk about things like cream soda dr pepper yeah, yeah. it's not cream soda dr pepper though so you're you're off base. what is it it's i thought you dr. just said pepper it was and cream soda oh there's a little ampersand Oh. Oh, so it's a is it a half and half mix? What does it taste like? What's the ratios? I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm super excited. Uh, it was way less dramatic than I thought it would have been. It just sounded That yeah, really sounded nice on this end. Yeah, it was like a CP fart. It's like <laughs> Let me tell you, it smells like cream soda. Like a lot like mm. Okay. And our verdict? Okay. okay. So I do like it. It's like a, a tame Dr. Pepper. Okay. So you, know, you know how Dr. Pepper gives you a little bit of that kick? Yes. I enjoy yeah. that kick. Yeah. The cream soda tames that kick. So it's got the flavor of the Dr. Pepper, the tameness of the cream soda, and, um, uh, you know what? I'm not blown away. I'm I'm not, but okay. I would give it. I'd still give it a thumbs up. Um, All right. If you're intrigued to try it, I would. I, I wouldn't get your hopes up, but it's right. solid, solid soda. Um, you know, the two of us, I think we kind of are. It's abundantly clear that we like a little bit of things with a kick, with a lot of flavor, with like a lot of oomph to it. So, yes, uh, I, I'm a I'm a oomph and kick person, definitely. Yeah. So, Doctor Pepper, oh, you know what? You know what else is good, Mister Pib. Mister Pib is good. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. I'm not I'm not really much of a soda drinker these days. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was listening to a podcast recently. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but they were doing like a um, uh, it was like a mailbag episode, and they asked like what soda would they bring back from their childhood if they could um if they could bring it back oh thank you i also have verners Ooh, this is Verner. a diet Verners. yes okay it's a diet ginger ale which uh oh to call verners ginger ale is 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 way too light it says it you gotta really yeah, but it's not a. It's I'll, I'll bring one to you. I, I don't know. If, did I bring you a Verner's last time I had them? No, no, no. I okay. I don't, I don't like aspartame. Well, here's here's the thing. Um, zero calories, and we they had them at my parents' house, and so I grabbed a whole case, and they taste delicious. It's one of the only sodas, much like Dr Pepper, that their diet version tastes exactly like their regular version. Uh, not many, not many can claim that. But uh, the podcast I was looking at, they started talking about like sodas that um, that I guess aren't around anymore. And it was uh, taking me back to like growing up and playing video games while downing like Surge. Oh, man. Or like uh, <laughs> or like a Jolt, Jolt Cola, Cola. <laughs> things like that. Jolt Cola was great because it, it didn't come in a 20 ounce bottle. It was a little bit bigger. Right. Right. It was different. It wasn't, it, and and they came in three liter as well. Mm hmm. Do they? they uh, the last time I saw a three liter soda was at a dollar store somewhere, and it was it was their. That's value the only. Brand. That's but the only like, place you'll find it. I've I haven't seen three liter soda, 
anywhere in forever. Yeah, I see the one liters at the grocery store. Um, I, I don't see the three liters unless, like you said, you're, you're like maybe at a big lots or um, uh, or some or like a Dollar Tree, yeah, Dollar General. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But um, so so Verner's is uh, not is a sponsor. not a sponsor um, is a soda from like my childhood that uh, I, I used to get when I would go visit my grandparents in Cleveland. And it was, uh, I believe it's created in Michigan. I okay. Think that's where it's I'm trying to see if it says here on the, on the can. I don't think it does. It might say it on the, on the box, but, uh, oh wait, no, here we go. We've got a Michigan original since 1866. I got family in Michigan. Maybe, maybe I can get them to send us some burners down. Up. Yeah, man. Like they, uh, they sold it in um, in Ohio, and so anytime I was in Ohio, I would get Verners. And then uh, they started recently, over, recently being the past four years, five years or so, uh, they started selling it in grocery stores in Indiana. And so when I go home to visit, anytime I go there, I'll grab like a case of Verners, and I'll I'll have it in the fridge here because it's like the one soda that uh, that I really like. I love, man. It's it's got that bite. Right, it's got that ginger bite to it. Yeah. It's um, it's like a ginger ale with. If you go to drink it in a glass, it might make you sneeze because it's oh, so yeah. fizzing, you know, and it's yeah. so bitey. Uh, and the the ginger kind of hits you, but then it's also got a little bit of like a almost like a vanilla bean after, Ooh, like a nice effect. Or, yeah, I like that going on. Um, and it doesn't taste like any other ginger ale that I've ever had. And uh, man, I love it. Yeah. Furners. Uh, so, I, I like I said, I I don't like the taste of aspartame. So right, if I taste that at all. I don't either. I don't either. And yeah. uh, like I can't drink diet sodas. I hate like again. I don't drink sodas. Snapples. Yeah, I don't do I don't do sodas that much either. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to be doing a little bit of drinking last night, so I figured get a little bit of soda maybe for the next day. But I yeah. hydrated. I stayed hydrated. So that's good. No that's good. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the, so when I was younger, uh, and, and it's not like obscure or anything like that, but, uh, I liked the clear Pepsi. Everybody, everybody. I liked the clear Pepsi. Uh, the clear yeah. Pepsi and, and I enjoyed that. Ah, oh, man. Um, you know, it's great. Uh, doc Brown's. I haven't had Doc Brown's. Doc Brown's has a black cherry cola. Okay. Aces. Um, they used to have it in a lot of kosher delis. Is that like a Jones Jones cola? No, no, no. You can actually find it at the um, at the grocery store now. Okay. Doc Brown's. But yeah, that hang that ranks ranks super high uh, on my list of favorite sodas. Trying to think of now what I've, the other thing is. Uh, I've recently uh, got a um, well, not recently. Last last Christmas, Annie got me a Soda Stream. Um, I think it was last Christmas. See that it was a birthday or so. She got it for me at some point. I can't remember what for, but uh, she got me a Soda Stream that I've. It's pretty much eliminated me buying sodas uh, yeah. it, at all because I can because I can make them. Um, right. And uh, and that's been awesome. Yes, that's that's been awesome. So the only ones I will buy now are like Verners, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's got to count. I like I said, a soda for me is just a, such a few and far between type thing. Um, mm -hmm. I have so much family and stuff that just go through it like crazy. Right. Even I even cut back on seltzers too because I I used I was drinking seltzer. A lot, but I almost. I was doing that too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. So I mean, I'll add I'll add a couple drops of lemon to uh to like a Soda Stream seltzer, and that'll be kind of enough yeah. for me to feel like I'm drinking a soda, or uh, or I've used um, vanilla extract, and you know, just giving it a little bit of a uh, little bit of a vanilla taste in there, which has been pretty good. 
but yeah, same thing with me is, is if I am going to get a soda every now and then, like, um, Annie will, will get like, uh, the little bottles of Coke cause Coke in a glass bottle. Um, I didn't think it was a big deal, but she like brought them and it was like, I, I tried it and I was like, yeah, this is, this is way better. We didn't think, we didn't think that thing was a big deal. And here we are. That's true. That's true. And here we are. So wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it is a big deal. But I, I do agree. You know, I do like the Coke from a bottle, but I love Coke from a McDonald's spout. From there, oh. a McDonald's soda is different because it's super syrupy. Yeah, I miss the original when I was a kid. I don't know if they changed it or if I changed, but the McDonald's orange uh, drink. Oh, yeah. Right. I think at some point they switched to like high C, and it's I, you know I don't like it. It's the oh. same way that like. I think they do Sunny D now. Is it Sunny D? It's. I don't mind Sunny D, but like they're old. When I was a kid, their orange drink was just awesome. Yeah. This is so good. I wasn't a big fan of that. I speaking of high C, uh Johnny, Big John Sweet Tooth, he mm-hmm. uh when they reissued Ecto Cooler for Ghostbusters, that that yes. of a movie. He I remember every like every pack. Yes, he did. Find, you could find every single. I had pack. some. <laughs> I, he gave me at least two or three, and and my the yeah. problem was the kids loved them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, those are well. Great. But it's different too, though. It's different. They changed it. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's not the same. I mean, I think like they're not allowed to make it the same way because of health codes or whatever. Probably whatever probably. dumb thing. All the cancerous things that were uh, that were right. Happening. Exactly. <laughs> You know what? I used to get Ecto Cooler. My mom used to get me Ecto Cooler in those cans, the giant cans where you had. Oh to- yeah, you have to like po- poke the the triangle in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we. Absolutely, to- that's what's to- up. Because you got to think fruit, uh, fr- frugally. Yes, I lost the word. The bad. You gotta, you gotta think. I'm not gonna close this. Oh no, no. Right. The best, the best part about it is you just commit. Yeah, you have you're in, and then it's like opening a pint of Hagen Dazs. You just throw the lid away. You don't. Nobody. I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> I had some delicious mint chocolate chip ice cream. It was homemade. Oh, yeah. Who, who's making ice cream? Uh, it, it, no, it wasn't like the place made it. Oh, okay. Well, that's not homemade. No, I didn't make it. All right. Uh, they did have they did have the green in it. Sorry. But it was See, still I, I had I had some mint chocolate chip ice cream. Uh, some of the I, I think probably my my favorite is the Briars, like Briars mint chocolate chip. Yeah, um, discuss this because you like the white. For some reason, I like I like the white. I like the no food coloring, but I also like that no matter how much you freeze it, it it scoops easy and soft. It's never like like solid frozen. You don't have to like wait. Or heat it up in a microwave to get it. You also have to. You have to. There's a way to scoop, and it really irks me when people don't know how to scoop properly, and they leave everything mm-hmm. on the sides. Why are you leaving? Oh no 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 no! You it's a it's a it's a circular. It's a circular process, man. I uh I I used to set when my first job was at an Italian food distributor. I think we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. And we used to make like stuffed shells and monogot and all that kind of stuff and raviolis. And the other thing we did was sell Italian ices out the window. Mm-hmm. On the weekends, I, I would be scooping Italian ices all day. Um, that was awesome. That was awesome. And that's where I really found the appreciation of scraping the sides because, man, once, once you get... Uh, you can't... You can't all the sides, the syrup starts to kind of drip down. It collects. It collects at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then you've just got chunks of ice on the top, and you, you just throw them at people that annoy you. Exactly. Yeah. You give them to uh, the, the kids that come up that don't know better. Right. Right. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Definitely scrape the sides. You know what? That, that Italian, the Italian ice 
the the Italian ice spoonful that you're looking for, right? It's the one where you 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 dig into it and your Italian ice is half like the color that it is, and then half almost solid, gooey syrup, syrup. darker color yeah. on the on the bottom. Yeah, dude. That's that's the perfect spoonful like, of Italian ice. Uh, the Corona mm-hmm. Italian ices, and they were tubs. And and the whenever I love lemon ice. Oh, I'm me too. Lemon ice. Yep. And when the customer would come, and I'd finally break through to that little spot, like you're saying. Yeah. It was like in oil. I oh was, yeah. I was so ecstatic. I was, I was just so excited, and I was like, "All right, well, guess I'm having ices today." This is mine. It was a good day. It was a good day. And I had a nice round vat of that syrup. Oh, that's amazing. Definitely, definitely took years off my life. But I was like, <laughs> I was I was like 16. So hey man, it's quality, not quantity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the years are taken off the end, and the end sucks. Good point. It's not good like they point. take years off your life in the middle. <laughs> yeah, you don't fall asleep. <laughs> was, yeah, I lost you years of my life doing doing drugs. They were the years between twenty one and twenty three. No, they weren't. They're eighty seven and eighty eight. I don't need those. <laughs> yeah, those you suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good call. I don't know, man. I I just uh, I I'm not a sweets person, but this episode makes me sad. Sem- Totally makes me sound like sweets person. <laughs> I I am a sweets person. I'm a sour person. I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, you know, like I just I I I'm an everything person. I'm a sweet and a savory person. I just yeah. if I have if I have one, I need the other. I need I need to have balance in my life. So if I eat something that's salty, I'm like, well, gonna have to have something sour or something sweet afterwards. Yeah, see, I'm the opposite. So if I have something sweet, it's like. All right, well, give me a pretzel or something because I got to get. Gotta get See, I, I I can do that too. This, you must have balance. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching uh, like all the Karate Kid movies with uh, with Jen and the kids because Jen and I watched Cobra Kai and mm-hmm. uh, you know great series by the way if if, if you haven't checked. All it right, out. so so talk to me for a second about Cobra Kai because um, I have so many I haven't watched any of them. Okay, I watched. Um, two episodes when they were on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Right. And I didn't get it. I didn't like it. I liked the karate kid movies when I was, you know, a kid and I watched the karate kid movies. Um, and maybe it's because I'm just not a nostalgia person at all, but I, I saw it and I was just like, eh, this is, I, I didn't get it. I, I thought it was kind of boring and I didn't really care. Like I was like, I don't care. I don't care what the, this guy's doing with his life these days. <laughs> like, I don't, what is, well, I don't care. You know what? It, for me, I, I loved those movies growing up. Uh, the first three mm-hmm. were actually in the middle of watching the third one with the kids, and and I'm sure people give me crap about uh, three sucked. Uh, blah, blah blah. Listen, it was a which one was the third one? Terrible. That was the one where. Um, Crease's old friend uh, infiltrated uh, Danny and Miyagi um, after they came back from Japan. Danny and Miyagi. Oh, and that's right. And yep, that's right. He was trying to get reve- uh, Crease was trying to get revenge, and this guy was kind of helping to get revenge. It was a, uh, it's a good one, and there's rumblings of him showing up in uh season four right the the main antagonist of number three uh, i'll have to give it a shot i'll have to give it another shot give it a shot because you know what it, it's not what i like about it is this is it, it makes everything gray yeah um, it change it changes the perspective of everybody and um Especially the the first season is kind of really trying to spin it like okay Johnny's the good guy, 
Daniel's a bad guy. But about halfway, eh, three quarters of the way through, you actually see where, okay, <clears throat> there's a little bit of understanding. Second season, just uh, they upped the ante. Uh, third season, Jen and I finished in like two, two or three days. Okay. Uh, it's an easy watch. It's 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes an episode. And yeah, it's just, yeah, I like that. That's different. It's a different, it's a different, it's coming at, at the same story from a different angle. That's actually what I really liked about, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but on Broadway, the show wicked. I, um, I haven't seen the show. Mm -hmm. I've taught a lot of the songs from the show. And I read a good portion of the book. Yeah. So that needs a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because that very much does the same thing where it it just spins the narrative. You, you're looking at it from the other angle. And I really like that. I really like that. If I like a story. I like that too. Yeah. If I like a story, if I like the characters, if I'm invested in the characters, I feel like seeing the story from other characters and their perspectives um and and there's like little cookie crumbs going hey this is how i got here when you first met me um mm -hmm. i really like that i really really do um that's something that i kind of wish they would have done with um with the venom movie yeah that's it, it's it's probably it probably would have been the better way to go about doing it rather than making this guy centric to whatever you're trying to do. Um, <laughs> right, right. I, I I still liked the movie, but uh, yeah, I like I liked the movie, but it wasn't it wasn't Venom to me. Right. It was just another. Yeah, it was like Japanese Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, similar to that. Yeah, where it's just a guy who looks like venom right he doesn't have sort the cool of. robots like like a japanese spider-man but <laughs> or the cool car yeah this crazy car yeah that's right um but yeah that's um yeah but yeah i i like that i like that about shows and i like that about this and and they're not they're not treating it like the first they're not just citing the first Karate Kid movie. Okay, um, so it's not just all about nostalgia. It's, it's, all, it's a different all take. Encompassing universe. Um, okay. There, there are, and I, Jen and I were like both super surprised, but there are characters from all three movies that are making appearances in this show. Okay, that's cool. All throughout. And, and I mean, I like I like how they did that with Mandalorian. You know, like I'm I today actually, I've watched almost all of season two of Mandalorian today because I was completely behind on it. Yeah. I have uh, two episodes left, which I will watch after we after we tape this, and um, and then I will be able to talk to certain friends of mine who I have been avoiding because uh, that's all they want to talk about, and I'm like, I didn't see it yet. Yeah. That's that reminds me of. Uh... Of what I used to do with you, yeah. I don't know if we talked about that on the show. Uh, we, I think we mentioned it where we were talking about movies, about how you used to come come Maybe. to the bar right after you watched the new Marvel movie, and it, it, it was the midnight showings were great because where else are you going to go at right. two thirty a.m. Oh, I'm going to go get a drink because Jimmy's come see me, <laughs> but. It got even better when the movie started at 7.30. Yes. The night before on a Thursday. And then I could get to Jim's bar before I was dead tired. <laughs> That's and true. By making night of it, I mean have some drinks and watch Jim avoid me like the plague. <laughs> That's that's what I had to do uh, when I was when I was home over the holidays because I hadn't seen uh, Mandalorian yet, um, season two. Because uh, a good friend of mine named John that I grew up with, 
like he's a movie buff. Like he's he's written independent films. He's made independent films. He goes and sees everything. Um, he's just like he knows the director's assistant to the assistant from 84 who turned into somebody who did something on some indie film that was great that changed the you know like he's that guy and uh, and then also he's a horror movie nerd comic book nerd um pro wrestling nerd you know like he's he's that he's he's one one of us well <laughs> you know like he's he's that and uh and so anytime we'd we'd get on the phone and everything he'd start talking to me about it and i'd be like i haven't seen it yet and he would just it, the next 10 minutes would be him explaining to me in great detail what a horrible person i am because i didn't see it yet and how dare i speak to him and deny him the ability to talk to me about <laughs> this show and the next time we talk i better be up on my shit That's because it. he's otherwise he'll just start sending me spoilers you know for all the crap that i gave you <clears throat> over the years mm -hmm. i hadn't seen Guardi the guardians of the galaxy 2 yet when you and i had so i guess it was um because we leave for these these uh video jobs that we do yeah leave on fridays and i believe it was shoot i don't even remember what what city it was that we went to um it might have been seattle I, I don't know but i think it might have been seattle actually yeah. and uh the, yeah it had to be seattle because um there was nothing to do there and we decided to right stay next time because well, seattle um, right so we that friday oh, we wait got, it might have been in Vegas because wasn't there wasn't there a theater in the place that we were staying? I don't know. I don't remember. No, it could uh, okay. have been Vegas. We were like balls to the wall the whole time. Vegas That's was good. the ROH deal though. Mm. That's right. Which speaking of which, um, if we're gonna talk about that a little bit, we are gonna start having some guests on the show. Yeah, from time to time, we're going to invite uh, maybe some people that we know, maybe some people that we've never met that we just uh, think it might be interesting to sit down and chat with about their life. Yeah, um, and one of those people happened to be somebody that we met at the ROH show in Vegas. Yeah. We to, so a little backstory here. Uh, we went to Vegas, and ROH had a pay-per-view, and... <laughs> Uh, for those of you that are not wrestling fans, ROH is uh, ROH is Ring of Honor, pro wrestling. It is a um, one of the bigger, I would say, maybe the in North America, maybe the second largest independent. Yeah, I would might be the largest independent, but who knows what's independent anymore? Yeah, I, I don't think AEW counts as independent anymore um i guess maybe impact does and I yeah don't i don't know either so ROH yeah maybe it's the biggest and uh so at the intermission uh, we we decided to go to the tv taping which so they have the pay-per-view which they they that is their main uh event where they thing shows in between lead up to one big show and that's where all the stories tend to take a big turn or end it's like a mini uh a more often yeah. season finale right yeah yeah um so yeah that that happened the night before and we weren't available to go so we went to what they call a tv taping which is where they tape all of the episodes for the month or two um and at intermission we went to the merch table and uh there was a guy there one of the wrestlers his name is chase owens he is a part of the bullet club which i'm sure if you're a wrestling fan or not you you've at least seen the t-shirts and hot topic exactly exactly and uh this dude is actually one of the first members of bullet club um the, in in terms of like current members, he's uh, 
he's he's been in there the second or third longest um and they've had a lot of iterations of this this group so um actually we'll we'll tell a pretty funny story but he's supposed to be on our podcast very soon yeah which is going to be looking forward to it that'll be fun yeah yeah i told him what we were about and he's like oh no politics no current events this is my favorite podcast already (laughs) we drink whiskey and just talk shit yeah exactly yeah exactly i said yeah well we talk like music and comics and this and that and and wrestling he's like i i know about wrestling he said cool <laughs> cool then that's what we'll talk about when you're here <laughs> so yeah uh, i do digress though so yeah jim jim actually had mercy on me when we had this video job he had seen guardians of the galaxy 2 we went away and yeah you you didn't mess with me at all i did not i did not because i'm a awesome. It's well, it's 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 simply because I am a better person than you. (laughs) That's what it really comes down to. It just comes down to that. I am uh, I am more thoughtful. I am less of a jerk to my friends. Okay, (laughs) we can go with that. We can go with that. It's it, it was completely off color for you. <laughs> it it wasn't it was it was slightly off brand. Uh honestly, it was because I knew how much you would dig it. And I and I honestly didn't want to spoil it because I was like, he's really gonna dig this. Yeah. Well, I, we never to go back to the bar thing, we never I never spoiled it for you. No, you never did. You just threatened it a lot. I always threatened it and that made the drinks cheaper. So, you know, and then, and then as you, the more drinks you had, the closer we got to you spoiling something. So the more drinks I would give you, the more I would kind of like stay away from you. Cause I'm like, uh, he's getting less and less responsible for his actions. Well, that was pretty good because you'd look at the bar and you go, his drink's low. And then you just bring me one, you put it down and then you'd walk away very quickly. Yeah. And it would be very, it was good. It was a good it was a good situation for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty solid. Someday I'll bartend again. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe. Maybe. You give, you give music lessons. Maybe we should plug that. Let's plug that yeah. right now. All right. I give music lessons. He gives music lessons. He's he's a yeah. really good musician. He's better than me. He's probably ah. better than you. He's a great writer. He's a great singer. I'm okay. I'm okay at showing people how to do things so that they end up better at it than I am. Okay. That's that's what I'm good at. Like Jack Black I'm, says. I'm, I'm good at explaining things. Like Jack Black says in School of Rock, those who cannot do teach. teach. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So uh if you or someone you love or know wants to learn how to sing, play guitar. Write songs. You have them uh, sliding into my DMs. <laughs> you can touch me on uh, any of my social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. Um, Jimmy G Shoes on Instagram and uh, Jimmy Garback on Facebook. And uh, Jimmy G Shoes on Twitter. So shoot me a message. I do uh, Zoom lessons and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I need to I need to do more work from home. <laughs> Got to do more work from home. Yeah. So uh, we're talking a little bit about the sodas and the movies and the. Uh, we've spoken about what's your uh, what's your movie soda? We talked about like movie candies before. Yeah. So yeah, so, what's like okay? So actually, since we can't. Since right now we're we're still currently, at least at the time of recording this, we're currently in New York, not really going to theaters, right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, we're watching a lot of stuff at home. I I over the holidays I watched Wonder, Wonder Woman eighty four at home. Um, so if you're at home, what do you do different as far as your movie snacks? Do you still do you still do popcorn? Do you do you break out the sodas for that? Uh, yeah. Do you drink? Do you do liquor when you're watching movies? Like, what do you, what's your kind of routine? It really does depend on the time of day. All right. So, if mm-hmm. I have to do something later on in the day, 
I will not bring out the alcohol. Uh, but, but I will say, Jen is a popcorn aficionado. Mm. And I'm not lying. She is straight up popcorn Gestapo. It has to be good. Really? Has, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we actually order it from Pennsylvania. It's wow. an Amish popcorn company. Oh, you did mention this before. Okay, what's yeah. the what's the company? Uh, I not a sponsor, but go ahead. Yeah, it's not a sponsor. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I believe it's just the Amish Popcorn Company or something like that. I'll get it for okay. a later episode, I promise. Uh, or, or no, actually. We'll throw it in the, it in the links down below. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw a link down below. But uh, they have they have these kernels. That, they're smaller than usual. They're smaller. They're cleaner. They have three or four different types. They have white, yellow, red, and uh, and blue. Um, all of them have a little bit different flavor, and she pops everything at home. Um, so yeah. She, now you're uh, you're you're an air popper like like me, correct? Or didn't you no? You bought air something. Air. You bought something for the microwave, right? So there's a silicone bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you bought the thing for the microwave. That's right. You put a quarter cup of the popcorn in, and then you put butter. They they sell like a butter solution where you can just pour it right on. What we've been doing is a little bit of coconut oil. Hmm. And, and Give a little sweetness. No, it, a little bit. I mean, it, you get the like the aroma. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, coconut oil is great. Uh, coconut Absolutely. oil, salt, and put it right in. You microwave that son of a bitch up, and we're rocking some popcorn. They also sell pre-made the bags, and the one we got were were cheddar popcorn bags. And the kernels are are smaller again, but once they pop again, they're smaller, and there's a lot less to get in your teeth. That's awesome. Which is which is a major plus. So, yeah, shout out to um, the Amish Popcorn Company that has a link in the description below. But that's usually... I'm going to check that link out, too, because uh, Annie is a huge popcorn fan. Um, just the fact that I'm at home right now and I've mentioned the word popcorn and she's in the other room and probably heard me means that we will probably be making popcorn tonight because I've said it too many times now. Popcorn. Uh Yep, popcorn. We do the air popper method, but uh, I recently got a new air fryer that has a um, like a rotisserie tumbler that you can okay. put inside it that uh, you can throw popcorn in that and kind of make it like movie theater style where it's like in the drum that's turning and spinning. So I'm excited to try that. Wow. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to check that out. Um, yeah, I you know I actually tried an air popper for Jen. I got so we had a couple of different types because she's a popcorn again. She's a popcorn aficionado. Um, mm -hmm. She's she's the editor of the magazine, and <laughs> we had so when we got married, there was one that we had where it was a it was a bowl right, and the bottom was metal. And then it had two metal arms, and it would just spin when you plugged it in. Okay. It spin, these two metal arms and the, the bottom of this. this so it would stir arm, it constantly. It would stir it constantly, and it would heat up, and it would pop. I like it. Um, it was really cool to watch. Um, you really had to keep close eye on it because it would burn. <laughs> right. Very quickly. What I liked about it is, is that the burnt popcorn wasn't at the bottom and you didn't look at it and go, oh, this this batch is good. The burnt popcorn was at the top. Oh, because when you put this bowl, there's actually a cover that comes down over it. And the way you the way you uh, dispense the popcorn is by turning it, turn over. it upside down. OK, OK. Um, it wasn't the best design. It was a little bit bulky, a little bit heavy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. The next one, I was 
I don't know why I just went on a whim and I got one. I think it was because we had when we talked that Christmas, she was like, oh, I don't we, we, we have a cap of X amount of dollars. I think it was like twenty five dollars each because we don't okay. need to buy each other more stuff and this and that. Right. OK, so I was actually trying to adhere to it. And I was I was telling her, I was like, I want to get you a popcorn popper. She's like, I don't want you spending a lot of money on me, let alone a popcorn popper. I said, but you like popcorn. <laughs> this is something that you're going to use. Right. This is your thing. I, I should invest in this. And she said, don't invest too much in it. So I decided to not invest too much in it. And then I bought the one that would just burn everything. <laughs> and the reviews right. would later show that it too would just go on fire. No popcorn at all. Oh. And it would just go on fire. A lot of popcorn makers catch on fire, spontaneously yeah. combust. Yeah. Uh, um, I find that to be odd, an odd uh, thing that, that's all too common Yeah, with so, the uh, popcorn so the, poppers. Popcorn poppers are just, I don't think the air poppers are the way to go uh, in that regard. The ones that, that have the dispenser out the front. See, ours, we've had no problem with ours. I mean, we do like stand by it while it's going and yeah. work it that way. I have a I have a friend that swears by making popcorn in, um, and everybody has one. I don't think any of us ever bought one. I think they come with whatever house you're in. Uh, just those steel bowls, right? It's like a steel bowl. You'll throw wings in it to sauce your wings. Uh, you'll mix salads in it. Just, yeah. just this regular steel bowl. I've never bought one in my life, but I've had one everywhere I've ever lived. So, um, <laughs> I have a friend that swears by making popcorn in those right on the burner, right? Because it's stainless steel bowl, so it's going to get hot as shit. Yeah. But what they do is they, they put a little bit of oil and the kernels and everything down in the bottom because they say that when it pops, because of the shape of the bowl, the popcorn stays above the oil and the seeds, the kernels stay in it. And so you get less popcorn burnt, you get less seeds and you can control it well. They just put like a, uh, they put foil over the top of it and poke a couple holes in it and let it vent. And they, they love it. They love doing it that way. I've never tried that. Uh, it strikes me as a very Jiffy Pop way of, yeah. uh, of doing your popcorn. And I've tried Jiffy Pop, and I've never successfully not burnt popcorn in a Jiffy Pop. Oh, dude. You know what? I, I wowed the kids with Jiffy Pop. Right. I totally wowed them because they were like, you're going to make popcorn on the stove while you're touching right. it? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and, uh it, it the the problem with Jiffy Pop is if you're if you're presenting it to a child and going, "Hey, I've got something cool for you. Watch this." The first ten minutes are boring as hell, right? Because because you're literally just sitting there shaking it, and you're like, "Yeah, no, 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 it's gonna happen." It's gonna you're happen. shaking a flat a flat pan. <laughs> A flat, uh, like, like pie pan. A flat aluminum pan. Disposable pie pan. Right. Over a, a um, and But but eventually, once it started popping, uh, I was like, okay, come back, come back, come back. And they, were, <laughs> they were wowed. I, I'll show you. I'll show you the, uh, the trick to Jiffy Pop. I yeah, there's got to be a technique. So. I, I would imagine it's like taking oh, it off the heat. It's, it's really, really important to have gas gas stove ah maybe that's it then yeah it's they they don't want you to do it on an electric stove yeah well it'll melt things yeah well it won't yeah. melt see i always thought of it as like a camping popcorn thing so i always thought of it as like over open flame yeah you because then you're not yeah. right over the direct heat and you're moving it around a lot and, sure but i've never done that either yeah i i don't uh I, I don't know, man. I, I was a big fan of Jiffy Pop uh, once I got the gas stove. But I do see what you're saying. The, the electric stove, the ones with the little coils. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a big problem with Jiffy Pop. So we have an induction now, which I uh, I like a lot. But we, we 
we got that after having the one with the coils and that just never i just don't like them yeah not a fan well i don't think they make those anymore do they probably not no. <laughs> probably not this was an old one yeah yeah i do like I, I really do enjoy having gas to cook on that's my job. yeah um absolutely we had it in the apartment and now we have it in the house and that's it's freaking great it's freaking great yeah fire is fantastic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fire is very useful in so many different ways absolutely. but i think it's time i think it's time let's do it now would you like let's have you answer one from one of our new decks well yeah i think it's my turn mm -hmm. um, to answer the question so would you like a uh would you rather or a what the heck i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's dealer's choice dealer's choice let's go with a what the heck just because i'm less uh sure of what that means yeah i don't know what that means either and that's so. pretty awesome I like going into things blindly. Exactly. Me too. I'm a fan. That's why, we're, that's why we actually have a podcast because we just said, hey, let's go. I will tell you right now, uh, we, we all know from past podcasts that I cannot shuffle. I, I just did the can. most successful shuffle of my life uh, on my leg off camera right now. The first one sounded um, like you fumbled a little bit, but the second the second shuffle sounded sounded better. All right, so let's let's cut the deck. And now, where would you like to choose? All right. For those of you that are just listening, I'm literally holding cards up to a camera. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with the first one at the top of the pile. Right here? Yeah, the top. The very tippy All right. top. One right there. Tippy top of the pile. Oh, okay. Do you have a favorite T-shirt? If so, what's on it, or what does it say? Wow, that's not what the heck. That's not a what the heck. I am a T-shirt guy. I'm sure everybody knows that by now. That I just um, jeans and T-shirt, or comfy pants and T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Forget the comfy pants. Never, uh, never forget the comfy pants. So, oh, my favorite shirt. My favorite shirt is hard to pinpoint for a That's long. That's a harder time. question than you would think, right? <laughs> yeah, for a long time, it was uh, a Red Hot Chili Peppers One Hot Minute '95 World Tour shirt. Uh, it had the cover of One Hot Minute on it, and all the tour dates in the back. Uh, I went to the one at uh, Nassau Coliseum. And it was them, Silver Chair, and the Rentals. Wow, friends of Pete. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, um, and yeah, I, I had that shirt for a little while, and then I eventually had to cut the sleeves off. And it was, it was like it's. I think it's an XL or double XL, so it still looks like I raided my father's closet, like a kid raids his father's closet, right? Um, it also what, what's funny about it is what I love is when I got it, it was that standard tour shirt. So your standard tour, like it's a rugged piece of material, right? Um, where it wasn't necessarily super soft, not comfortable. No, needs to be but, washed a few hundred times. Right. But now when I put it on, it is fantastic. Yeah, it ages. It. Yeah, so it's a 25 year old shirt, but um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I have that situation with a, a dark blue shirt that com that company independent. I don't know if you yeah. ever seen, yeah, the old yep. PAX on, uh, company. So I have right. a, a blue shirt of theirs again. I ended up having to cut the sleeves off. Um, there's a lot of sentimental value in that too because that's uh. That's the shirt that I met Jen in. And, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's when I used to have arms people wanted to look at as opposed <laughs> to now. Um, but yeah, that, that's another old shirt that I actually still have it. I have all these old shirts still. I'm a t-shirt guy. But nice. nowadays, yeah, I, I, uh, 
I like this one. My my uh, Beverly Kills. They have really good stuff now. Uh, ego Ego Kills Talent. Yes, his, his the current shirt he's wearing does say Ego Kills Talent. Um, For those two, again that are listening only, um, I do like my Rebel Nine shirt because it is super soft. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, those are those are my like go tos. Um, right now, I'm just trying to think of any others but yeah i love t-shirts and they're just my jam nice so a good question for me it's a very well, there you question. go there you what go it's you, a good question you? from the uh from from the what the heck from the what the heck deck in the pod decks powered by pod decks yeah yeah uh what for you, me what about you? you got you got any like i've go-tos? got um yeah i've got some go-to's uh, I have a hard time throwing shirts away. Mm-hmm. That's that's one thing. Like I have so many shirts, um, and I, I've I've given away and like goodwilled so many shirts and stuff. But generally, what happens is I wear them until they start getting like holes in the in the pits and yeah. stuff, and then I'll cut the sleeves off, and then they become right. a sleeveless shirt, right? Yeah. So so I have the one I'm wearing right now, which is a classic Bad Religion shirt. Uh, I wear that on my Bad Religion Sundays. Um, I have uh, one of the newer shirts that that I like a lot. Uh, I got at the um, at a one of the last big concerts, probably the last big concert I went to, which was in I guess uh, probably November of last year, where I went to see the uh, I went to. LA and saw the 40th anniversary of social distortion and they had a, a big show that uh, I got. Um, I got one of their shirts and it's a very comfortable shirt. They, they have really good shirts. Their, their shirts are like that, that thin and comfortable and soft. Just so people know, we're not talking, this is we're in the new year of 2021. So, right. So this was actually, that was November, 2019. That was 2019. I remember, I remember when you do it. Yeah. That is such yeah. a sick, sick experience. Oh man, it was so great. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one of my favorite shirts. Um, I really like. Uh, I have a jackknife stiletto shirt that's super comfortable that I like a lot. It's um, uh, their uh, it's their legs logo on like a gray okay. shirt that I like a lot. Um, yeah, those are those are some of my go tos. I have a couple of like comfortable shirts that are thicker you know like those are all very thin yeah. very like thin material very um very comfortable and light and then uh i i have a couple of like thicker shirts i have a um a cheap trick shirt from uh from i went to florida to see uh cheap trick Hart and joan jet on the last date of their big tour after uh after they all went in the hall of fame and um and so I got that shirt there, and that's that's a super comfortable shirt that I wear all the time. Something, uh, something I find too, and you wear a lot of them. Uh, wrestling shirts. Mm. Wrestling shirts are uh, again that rugged material. It's that yeah, like, not rugged, not comfortable off the bat. Uh, gonna last you. It is gonna last you the next forty years. But it's not super comfortable to begin with. But yeah, I have right. a CM Punk one. I think from TLC 2010. Whenever, whenever they were at the Barclays Center, um, and Punk actually didn't wrestle. He he was supposed to. He was champ, and he didn't get to wrestle. Uh, that one, that shirt, I I still use. I unfortunately used it to make this at one point, and I have right. paint and spackle and crap all over it. But, yeah, um, a lot of my WWE shirts are uh, and now and and now too. After they've been washed, like you said, a couple hundred times, they get really hot. Yes, you can't lounge around the house in them I, unless no, you, you can't just lounge around the house. Yeah, they they feel like work shirts. They feel like like I put them on and I'm like, did Dickies make this? Like, what is this? Yeah. Um, right, and if you if you've never worn a Dickies shirt, it's like um, it's like a cloth suit of armor that you're putting on. Yeah, yeah. 
Have you wore, yeah. have you ever worn Dicky socks? I, I haven't. I haven't even chanced it. I gotta tell you, I got some on Amazon. They're really good. Nice. See, They're... I'm I'm picky. I'm picky with my socks because they gotta have a certain aesthetic. I got. I have a very. Uh, I go very visual with my socks. I like a lot of colors. I yeah. like a lot of designs. I don't, I don't. I don't want people to look at my feet. I hate feet. I. You know what? It's it's for me, man. It's everything else I wear is black. <laughs> so it's like it's a little bit of like. You know, I'll sit there. I'll I'll, I'll put my I'll put my foot up on my knee, and I'll be like, "Yeah, man, I feel pretty." <laughs> yeah, I just stick with the black socks. It's, it's fine. <laughs> That's fine for me. But it looks like but yeah. So those are my those are my shirts. I have I had a CM Punk shirt that lasted me forever, as well as a uh, very vintage uh, Edge Rated R Superstar T-shirt. Mm-hmm that I had for years and years and years that turned into a sleeveless shirt that turned into a show shirt. And uh, both of those shirts, as has happened for some reason with, with um, whenever I cut off my shirts at some point, I don't know how it is that, um, that I must walk so close to drawers and things, but uh, they'll catch a knob on a drawer and just rip out the side. And I'll be like, well, that's the end of that shirt. I don't even know how that happened. Yeah. That's, that's that's, that happens to me. That is actually happening with the one hot minute shirt. I think, I think the, the rip is down to like almost waist level now. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I, I used to, I don't have a waist that I can do that anymore. I used to, but I don't now. Yeah. I mean, so what, what's good is it looks like I, again, it looks like I raided my father's clothes. And I'm a, I'm a toddler, and right. so so it's long enough that I've got some playroom. Mm-hmm. So it goes a little past the pockets of my 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 pants. So I still got time. I still got time. <laughs> but once again, we want to thank everybody for joining us, listening. Yeah, wow that that hour went by fast, man. It it did because we haven't been here. Yeah, we didn't even we didn't even talk about what did we talk about? T shirts and movies and popcorn and sodas. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what we talked about today. There's the title. Talking about the important shit here. <laughs> There's the title. <laughs> I like it. But uh once again, if you love the podcast, as always, make sure Which you should a five star rating, you follow us. Yeah, if you're if you're on an Apple product, five star rating. It's super easy for you to do, and it really really helps us get seen. It costs you on, zero dollars. Zero dollars, and and like half a second. Yeah, it does. And yeah. uh, like, like us, subscribe to us on the YouTube website. Yep, Strangerhood TV. You yeah, can go maybe. to strangerhoodtv.com if you don't want to type in YouTube first. Yeah, and if you do, you can type in youtube.com slash strangerhood TV. But like, like subscribe. Yeah. yeah. There are no wrong turns, merely alternate exactly. turns. I like it. I like that. It's another t shirt idea. There you go. That's I have I, I have said that forever. I keep that's one of my one of my mantras to myself. To, to not freak out over things. I like it. I like it. That'll be a part of the uh, the uh, retarded uh, Tim Robbins episode that you do. Right. You all your great your great mantras. All right. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, once again, uh, and yeah, the Patreon, Jim. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, if you, if you really love us or if you want to help us, uh, put this on really anything you do, like, um, you know, we mentioned the pod decks and stuff, you guys going on the pod decks, it saves you money, but what it does is it lets them know that people are watching this and that people are using, um, are using the link from our show when they shop there. And what that does is it keeps them coming back to sponsor us more and it attracts more sponsors. And that helps us to kind of keep putting this out there and eventually 
maybe even get something out of it. Maybe we can buy ourselves a drink, um, help our whiskey habit. And uh, if you want, if you want to fast track helping us on a whiskey habit, we like to think that uh, you know we're we're hanging out the way we would hang out at a bar or at each other's house or something like that. And you guys are kind of sitting in and hanging out with us. So if you were sitting out with us and hanging out and enjoying our talk and you wanted to buy us a drink, we would be more than happy to allow you to do that. Well, we're not at a bar, but we are online. And if you want to join our Patreon, you can actually uh, buy us a drink. That's really all yeah. it is. You, uh, you can it's literally buy us a drink and we'll give us five bucks a month and buy us a drink and we will continue to bring you stuff and um, bring you some new stuff too. We've got all kinds of things in the works and some special yeah. stuff on there just for our patrons uh, who we appreciate I very much. Things myself and uh, they're ready. They're ready to go. Nice. Um, there's, there's a tour of the maybe 200 square feet that resides here awesome uh, no it's less than 200 square feet but <laughs> nonetheless <laughs> if you want a tour here and i'm sure uh i'll probably do a rig rundown because i have all sorts of fun shit and um we also have some whiskey tastings yeah which we will do more of some cooking things that I i've been working on um, yeah, some live stuff in the work too. We're gonna be doing stuff. some uh, some special live shows and uh, hangouts um, just with just with our patrons. So, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, go and hit us up on the Patreon. Yes. No new picks. Sorry. No, nope. it's uh, it's SFW. Yeah, it's well, Except, well maybe well, language. Maybe language. Yeah, we uh, curse. Oh, You'll have to go to the fans only for uh, right. For <laughs> so. Once again, thank you. I am Mike from Something Heavy. He is Jim from Craving Strange. We are together. Bacon is my Any... passion. And this is Bacon is my podcast. Hit the countdown. What's your bacon? It's going to be disappointing someday. That, that went quicker than the hour went. <laughs> I would think so. It's 30 seconds. I guess so. That didn't make sense. All right. We need <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>